What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so at the time that I'm doing this video, we've just had a recent update to Studio One being version 4.5. Now, I've already done some video content uh, for 4.5 directly with Personas, and in addition to that, all of the various partners that are doing tutorial content for Studio One and Personas products, they've all done their own 4.5 series as well. So I don't really want to go over any of the main ones, but what I do want to do is take a moment to outline some of the features or improvements that were added that have slipped through the cracks. So they might be a smaller feature, but equally as useful in my opinion. In some cases, even more useful than some of the bigger ones. Depends how you want to look at things. Okay, so first and foremost, this is something that was already pointed out by some people, but in case you are unaware, the chord track got a major update in that it allows us to essentially addition chords, but the feature that I want to focus on right here is the play track. So I've got an audio loop and it's muted, but let's just extract the chords and we'll reset this. Now, if I was to play right now, we wouldn't hear anything. So if I muted everything and I pressed play, we're not hearing anything. That's because you need to assign something. So we have this default instrument, the chord preview. Now, before I do this, take a look at this. I'm gonna open up my instrument rack. Watch what happens when I hit chord preview. So we immediately get an instrument. It's an instance of Mai Tai, and it is loading a user preset that is chord sounds, chord preview. So that's a default sound. So that means that our Studio One song, if you enable the play track now, it will automatically play this. Okay, way too low. Let's bring this down using the trim. Now we can control the octave by adjusting the octave over here and the velocity as well. I'll just adjust the octave and I'll leave the velocity set at 80%. And of course you could load any preset that you want, but I think that's fine for a starting point. Now I want to take a second to talk about why I think this is such a great feature. Let's say that you wanted to flesh something out. You're in a coffee shop or you're working with a mobile rig and you just want to do some quick writing. It's very easy to just, now that we have the addition chords, I'm just going to deselect this for a moment. Um, let's bring this back up. If I choose a chord now, I've got a really good sense of laying something out harmonically in terms of a roadmap. Now, if you add a simple kick and maybe a snare to this, Essentially, you could lay out a really simple session and you could get to work right away without even having programmed any MIDI. Just having this in there as kind of a harmonic roadmap. So for me, I would feel confident to get a vocalist to start writing to that and then you don't even have to have it completed or fleshed out. You can just start generating ideas right away. So that to me is a really, really cool feature. Uh, this is a huge highlight for me in terms of my workflow, having this trim here and the ability to adjust the polarity. But a lot of these console options, they're really great. Being able to see the import controls, the sends, IO connections, VCA connections, group assignments, stuff like channel note. But one thing that I never really liked and I don't like in general is having to mouse click things to find menus. If I'm using something a lot of the time, I want to be able to just toggle that on and off really quickly. So one thing that happened with 4.5 is that a lot of these features that maybe didn't have a key command or they weren't linked in the key commands yet have been linked. So for example, input controls. I can toggle this on and off very quickly. I might not want to see them all the time. Same with channel notes. So these are things that you can map out yourself. Uh, in addition to that, the group labels. Maybe I don't want to see my VCA connections. Uh, maybe I want to bring up my group attributes. So all of these functions that didn't used to have a key command in Studio One, they now have a key command. So if you would like to toggle things like your input controls or your group labels, or if I wanted to toggle my notes on and off, uh, let's switch over really quickly to a quantum, click apply and okay. I can also toggle on my audio device settings. So the minute I toggle this on, we don't have any input set here. Let's set an input for one. Maybe we'll set this one over here. You'll see that I have my input device controls too. So the input device controls are different than the software device controls. These will control the input, uh, the actual device if you have a supported Personas interface. 
Now, on the input side, this is completely redesigned. So we have a bigger area where we have the same parameters over here that are compacted in the actual channel view. So that to me is pretty useful, not necessarily that they added them, but that they added an actual keyboard shortcut so that if I wanted to remove some of these items, like I'm cluttering things up in my arrange window right now, I don't need to see my group labels. I don't need to see my notes. I just want to work in this view. Maybe I need to see my inputs for a second. These have all been added as shortcuts. Now, another thing to point out is that we have some other shortcuts which are really, really useful. If you're working and you're constantly finding yourself changing your quantize value, we've always had key commands to be able to choose a specific quantize value. But what that meant is that if I wanted to have, for example, these three or four options over here available, I had to take up three or four key commands. Or in this case, if I wanted this whole top row, we're looking at seven key commands. Now, watch this. I can change my quantize value, the base quantize value, with the previous and next. And if you're looking for that, we go to keyboard shortcuts and just type in base and you'll see quantize, next base, and previous base. Choose a key command that's open and map that out if you need to do something quickly, like you want to move to a 16th node and then move to a quarter note grid. It's much easier for me to toggle two different keys than to have to remember which one of six key commands I assigned a specific quantize value to. So again, super useful. Another thing worth pointing out is that on a Mac, now you can now use the function keys. I think it's F13 to... Uh, F13 to F19, those can now be used as, as a keyboard shortcut where we didn't used to be able to use those. Another big one is I always like to move my cursor in exact values or exact steps. So I end up using the previous and next bar a lot, but check this out. Now we have previous and next beat. So how do we find this? Again, we go into our keyboard shortcuts and I'm going to type in beat and we have forward beat and we have rewind beat choose an open key command assign that and if you need to make adjustments or you want to move your cursor to the previous or next beat in your song then that's something that you can do as well now in addition to that we just have a lot more key commands in general that are available and and that i find very useful um, in addition to these console options that we have here. Uh, so for example, if we look at all of our snap settings over here, if we go to our key commands and we go to keyboard shortcuts and I type in snap. So we have snap to relative grid, snap to event hotspots. I mapped out the zero crossings one because I think that's very useful to have for me when I'm doing my editing. So by default, you'll see that it's off right now and I can just fire off a key command. I've turned it on fire off a key command again, and I've turned it off. So another one that's useful to me. Let's take a look at something else. If you're making a range selection in Studio One, the default behavior when we play a range selection is that it will play that selected range, but it won't stop at the end of the range. So let's just bring ourselves back to using the Apollo for a moment. And let's play this. Okay, so you can see that it plays, but it keeps going. If you move over to Pro Tools, and I know you guys are saying why well, you're in Pro Tools, I just want to point something out. If you have your transport loop enabled in Pro Tools, then if you make a range selection or you have a clip selected, it will behave as expected. Now, if you have loop disabled, when you have a range selection made or a clip selected in Pro Tools, it only plays once. So I know some people who are using Studio One may say, well, why would it play any more than that? And I guess that's a fair assumption, but for me, having worked in Pro Tools from around 1999 or 2000 or somewhere around there up until I made the full switch in Studio One version three, this was something that was very confusing for me. But now, check this out. We have a new option. If we go to our keyboard shortcuts, this is Play selected range. I've mapped this out to something on my numeric keypad, which is really close to my mouse hand. So if I make a quick selection on something and I wanted to addition it, I can do that very quickly. So you might be asking, well, why is that useful? I find it extremely useful when you're trying to addition certain areas of a song. So for example, 
if you wanted to extract a sample and you maybe you wanted to export that to a sampler of some sort, let's give ourselves a full screen for a moment. Let me zoom into this area over here. I will use my tab key to move to the beginning of this section. I'm going to use shift tab to move to the next hotspots. So now if I take a look at this particular range selection and I wanted to addition this to see how the, just this range selection sounds, Previously, the only way we could do this is by putting in a marker and setting it to stop. But if you use this shortcut now, I was able to hear very, very clearly that the beginning of my edit is not bad. And in fact, let's zoom into the section here and we can enable our snap to zero crossings. And let's just pull this out. Boom. That's starting exactly where I want it to now. Let's listen again. Okay, but we have this little quirk that's happening at the end of the audio. And that would be very hard to hear in isolation without cutting this event if you don't use this option of play selected range only. So now what I could do is I could move this back and let's have a listen and we'll, let's try to eliminate that little blip at the end and we'll try to look for a, what would be a clean edit. And in this case, I would wanna have snap to zero crossings on. And once you're happy, with this range selection and how it's sitting and you audition just the playback range only or the selected range only. There, it's sounding transparent to me. At this point, I could go ahead and break this audio event. Now, it doesn't just have to be a range selection. If I wanted to select a specific event, the key command works for a selected event or a range selection. So if an event is selected, or if I had a range selection made, it's the same thing. Now the idea here is once you have this edit refined and you make sure that everything is working as expected, you could do whatever you want. You could send to a new sample one, you could set this to a one shot. Now if I triggered this, and we have peace of mind in knowing that our zero crossing points, look, we cut it perfectly at the beginning, and this is playing nicely without any clicks and pops, as is. So that to me is another really, really useful feature. And now that we have it, and now that I have that mapped out, I think I'll be using that a lot, just to quickly addition. Okay, that sound, what is this? What's this here? You can just make a selection and you don't have to worry about something plain. And the other thing is if you're super zoomed in, let's say I'm zoomed in all the way, if I don't use that preference, my transport is gonna keep going. And depending on how your transport is setting, you might end up off your screen altogether. So you see it keeps on moving. Now when I stop it, it's going back to the position. But if I have another transport behavior going, and I were to stop that, I just wanted to addition that loop. So I'd have to bring myself back to the selection. This is a great preference because it will only play what you have selected. Now one more thing that was included that I haven't seen anybody cover is we have a new preference in Advanced Console. If you see Plugin Menu, by default, it should be set to advanced, which is what we're used to. And for me, honestly, I like using the advanced view, but we also have a different view available, which is basic. So let's open up our channel for a moment and let's click the plus button and notice that we get the menu that we're used to seeing. We have our different folders and these will be different depending on how you have your plugin sorted, but we're able to select things. Now let's enable this preference from advanced to basic. We'll click apply and okay. And now we have a different folder. Now, if we select here, you see these categories, they will automatically display anything that's set up as for these categories. Now, personally, I would much rather see these organized by vendor. Maybe I'm missing something and there's a, an organization option that we can do. Actually, let's check that out really, really quickly. If you go to the Home tab, we can open up the new Plugin Manager. Okay, so this is arranged by vendor. I don't see any options in terms of the sorting order of the basic view. All right. Well, regardless, if this is something that you might be interested in, if you don't like the way that the advanced view is, we have this other option over here, which allows you to simply look at a basic view of your plugins versus the advanced. Personally, myself, I prefer this to be in the advanced view, but feel free to have a look. So that's it for me. The chord track preview, play selected range only, all these new key commands that are available now in terms of our channel components and our different options that were previously not available. Uh, the other big ones are being able to use the previous and next beat and also 
the previous and next time base in terms of changing our quantized values without having to grab my mouse and select these options. And keep in mind, if you pair this particular preference with the other preference where we can toggle triplets on and off, if you need to temporarily move to a triplet to be doing some MIDI editing or something like that, this is also a really useful feature. And if you're looking for that triplet option, it is quite simply triplet. And I've just mapped that out. So for me, the previous and next quantize value and the triplet, they're right beside each other. I'm using command one for the previous, command two for the next, and then a quick step over for me to switch or toggle triplets on and off. So that might help a lot of people in terms of your editing, being able to adjust those features. But those are some of the ones that I feel are kind of hidden gems with 4.5. They maybe slip through the cracks in some other videos. Anyways, that's all the time I have available. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got something from this. If you did enjoy it, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.